What's going on YouTube? Nathan here and today I decided I would um, record a session of me painting a uh, Camping World truck uh, Silverado. Um, I'm not an expert at, at this but uh, I paint most of the trucks for the people in our league um, I've and it's fun so I dabble in it just on my own if people have ideas or concepts or uh, real life paint schemes that they want I try to do it for them um, I uh, am a firm believer that the more I do it the more I try and the more I fumble through it the, the better I'll get and uh, so far that has been the case um, we're gonna be using GIMP because it's free and uh, although it may not be as intuitive from the get-go as something like Photoshop or Corel or whatever other programs people use it's free and it does do most if not all of the things that those other uh, pay for programs can do so with me starting out uh, a few months ago I decided to uh, use GIMP because it's free and I didn't have any experience with any of the other ones so it wasn't like I really knew what I was missing so this is gonna be for GIMP uh, and we're gonna do I guess we'll do an iRacing paint scheme because this is for iRacing um, so I don't know I mean we're gonna go through it from uh, start to finish and I have to uh, before we get started I have to give a shout out to the guy who uh, kind of taught me how to do it, uh, how to use GIMP. Um, he was on YouTube, and it is the uh, you guys know him on YouTube as Nuker Atsky. Um, he has some really nice, really easily laid out, uh, easy to understand tutorials. So I'm gonna try to do the same thing. Um, here's his channel, Nuker Atsky. Okay. Um, Oh, just sounds like a nice guy. Uh, he split his up into different parts, um, his tutorials up into different parts, and, and uh, really took his time explaining how to do each function. So I'm going to try to do the same thing, but I'm just going to make this one one tutorial start to finish. That way, people can can pause it and uh, then resume it as they go if they'd like, instead of having to find different videos. Um, his videos helped me. Hopefully, this video helps you guys. So uh, here we go. So the first thing is, uh, we'll, I guess we'll fire up GIMP here. Um, and for you, those of you not familiar with GIMP, it is, it's just like I said before, it's a free version of uh, Photoshop. A lot of the terms, a lot of the uh, menu options, a lot of the uh, templates are almost identical. Um, so the most difficult part when you start is just finding where the options are to do certain things um, you know at first I didn't know what things were called like okay I wanted to put a shadow behind uh, a logo okay well that's called a drop shadow so you know at, at first you kinda struggle str uh, stumble through all that to find the terminology and then once you know what something's called then it's a little bit easier to find how to do it on on Google or YouTube or whatever so uh, we're gonna do the truck so I've got three monitors so um, the folders sometimes will be over here to the right uh, or on the left so if you hear clicking I'll talk you through what I'm doing uh, uh, so just know that that's why you can't see it because it's on another monitor so actually you know what I'll just do it over here so it's easier to follow so I have my templates all saved under my documents believe I have yeah here we go iRacing paint schemes is where I saved mine all iRacing templates okay so here's a bunch of different templates for different vehicles here so this is what we want Chevrolet Silverado truck 2015 alright so we'll fire that bad boy up okay and this is what you start with okay imagine the truck on track sliced into segment sort of and then unfolded into a flat image that's what we've got here alright so here's the front I mean it's common sense really if you kinda step back and take a look at what you're looking at here this is obviously the front clip alright the front bumper this is obviously the rear 
Here's the tail lights, the tailgate latch, which I'm not too big of a fan of that, but whatever. Um, hopefully they make that an optional, an optional uh, part that you can turn on or off. Well, we'll talk about that later. Um, <clears throat> this is the driver side. Okay, so this is obviously the front of the truck, the hood, roof, the rear deck lid. So this, just imagine the driver side folded out. Okay, and put flat on the ground. So this is the driver side here, and this is the passenger side. All right. So, uh, so I said we wanted to do an iRacing truck. So first thing we'll do is, uh, we're, we will let's get this over here. Look up iRacing logo. All right. So if you're not going to make your own logo, this is how you would find it, and this goes for anything, not just iRacing. Um, obviously, the more popular a brand is, or a company, or, or whatever, the more popular it is, the better results you're going to get when you search for a logo. Um, I did a, a paint scheme for a buddy of mine, Nick Taylor, and he wanted to do it for, I think it was called Cash Saver, which is a, a grocery store. Uh, and I don't think it's a very big one, because I had a hell of a time trying to find any kind of logo, much less a usable one. Um, all the ones I could find were really small um, and, it, and here's a rule of thumb for you guys the bigger the logo the better because you can always scale it down to fit on the truck but if you have to scale up if you have to make the image larger to make it fit somewhere it's gonna really show that it was a low quality image it's gonna be pixelated and, and blurry and just it's just not gonna look very good so it doesn't bother some people which is fine but for me I, I like to make them look as good as possible so anyway, so we're going to look for an uh, iRacing logo, and uh, the other part of, about this is, is that if you type in iRacing logo, you're going to get stuff like this. Okay, now notice how there's a white background here for this logo, okay? It's a good looking logo, but the problem with it is, in terms of using it uh, for a paint scheme, is that there's a white background. Alright, so if you go back here, go back up one page, iRacing logo, and then type in PNG. PNG is a type of image file which commonly has transparent backgrounds okay so a JPEG JPG typically is just a solid image with a background so, you know whatever that you can't see through it's not transparent so if you type in PNG after the search and then go to the images um, you click on this first one here just for example alright now you see how this has a checkerboard uh, behind the logo, that's not what that lo would look like in uh, in GIMP. That's actually transparent. Okay, so uh, let me move this over here for a second. What we'll do is uh, we'll save this. All right, so this is my current. This is actually my current logo folder, uh, but we're gonna start a new one just for this tutorial, so it's easier for you guys to follow. YouTube uh, GIMP tutorial alright so this is where we're gonna save all of our logos boom and we'll call this one iRacing and you can see save type as PNG so we're gonna save that alright and now over here I'm just going back to that folder my pictures canva wait for that folder to pop up top here take a sip of my mellow yellow alright so so far we've got one image in here right so let me move this over here for a second. We're going to drag this. Actually, here, let me move this a little bit further over. So what I'm doing is I'm clicking on the image, and I'm going to drag it over here. But what we're going to do is, actually, you know what, before I do that real quick, let me run through this layered area. OK, so these are all the layers. So uh, you can click this eyeball here and that is what makes a layer visible or not now you see this is kinda like the main layer of everything underneath it see how it's kinda staggered to the left that means if you turn that off everything gets turned off basically okay now wiring turn that on it actually kinda gives you more of a 3d idea of what the panels are doing and how they're gonna line up so we're, we'll use that later to make some lines match up and things um, this is the copyright iRacing one. You don't leave that on because that's you don't want that stamp there like that. Um, if you're painting on the on the quarter panels, clicking the number block locations 
helps you to see where the number will be stamped in an iRacing server. So you know, you know, if you want your focal point of a paint scheme uh, to show, you don't want to have it in this area of the truck, obviously, because when a number is stamped on the truck, it's going to cover it up. So that's sort of a nice guideline there. And uh, on the flip side, this is the sponsor block locations uh, layer. So you can see where sponsors uh, should go so that they don't conflict with any of the uh, contingencies or other things that iRacing is going to stamp onto the truck. All right, so we'll unclick that one again. Now, here, this is a, a good one to know. Here's parts, okay, so these, these are all the headlights, taillights, uh, hose, couplers, um, I mean, it's just all the random parts on the truck. The roof cam, I believe, is in this. Don't quote me on that one. Roof cam might be somewhere in this uh, in this one here. Um, but these, you can turn these off to paint, but no matter what you do, uh, when we paint stuff, when we do our own work, it's going to be below all these layers. The higher up a layer is on this list here, the more importance it has, okay? So anything underneath parts is going to show up underneath parts. It's not going to overlap the headlight. If we if we paint something down here, uh, it's not going to show up on this image up on top of the headlights. Okay. Um, we'll, but again, I'll walk, I'll kind of talk talk through those specifics more as we get to those points. Contingencies. These are uh, the logos that iRacing stamps on. You can turn them on or off here. iRacing is going to stamp them on the truck either way, out on track. So you might as well, I mean, I just leave them on so that I know exactly where uh, things are going to be and what they're going to look like on track. So some people like to turn them off so they can see what's going on underneath the stamps. I don't really care about that because you're never going to see that anyway. So I leave those on. Now, paintable area. So this, uh, everything under here is stuff that you can manipulate, basically, OK? So windshield banner, you see that turning black and white or black and blue because blue is the base color. Uh, you can actually write whatever you want or put pictures or whatever you want to do with this windshield banner now. So that's kind of cool. That's new for this uh, 2015 build. Tape, you can manipulate the color of the tape. Cockpit hose mount, etc., etc. There's a bunch of uh, parts you can manipulate, but I'll talk to those when we get there. Okay, these are all the eye racing patterns that you can use red, green, and blue patterns. Um, this tutorial isn't really about that because uh, to be honest with you I'm not the best at manipulating these. They involve going into this channel tab and doing some different things. It's not really my cup of tea so for now we're just gonna leave this invisible so we don't have to mess with any of these all these things here. So everything we're gonna do is gonna go directly above the base color okay so um, what color? Let's see. What color do we want this to be? Mm, let's see. Let's do like a dark gray or something. For now, we can always change it. Uh, the most one of the most important things about painting is that you do everything in layers. That way, if you want to make changes, it's easy. Uh, it's easy to do. And again, that will make more sense the further along we get. Okay. So, what I did there was I chose the color I wanted. Here, I'll go back because I just realized I didn't talk through that at all. Okay, so I said, all right, we want to make a dark gray base coat. So I went here over here to the color portion, the palette, if you will. I clicked on this because it was black and white. There we go. So I, I click on that, and it brings up this thing here. Now, uh, I know that here's where you would select different colors, but... Um, I know that gray, black to white, is along this bottom line no matter what color you choose. So I knew that uh, I didn't have to mess with the color thing. So I just slid this down to a gray that I wanted. Okay, clicked OK. Now that's the main color that's selected. Then we click here. This is the bucket fill tool. All right, fill selected area with a color or pattern. There are hotkeys for a lot of this stuff. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm just old school or just dumb, but I like to just click on things. Uh, so then. Now, uh, when you go down here, anytime you click on a tool up here, there's going to be different options for it in this toolbar here. Um, what we want to do, 
since this is its own layer and it's at the very bottom, remember how I said that layers uh, on this list are an order of importance and what they're going to show up on top of. So, for example, this is the bottom layer. So it's not going to fill up this whole box if we click on whole selection. It's just going to fill everything that's blue. Okay? So we're going to click that. And uh, let's say you did something and you didn't like it. You can always just go back here to edit and then undo your last change. Uh, you can also hit control Z. But I'm, gonna, I'm not going to talk through all the shortcuts. You guys can figure those out on your own. Alright, so now we've got the gray here. Okay, so I'm looking at it. I don't know if I like the color or not, but we'll figure it out later, right? Alright, so the next thing is, now we're finally going to go back to this image. Um, the image we downloaded. So, uh, I'm going to put it over here so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to click this drag it and I'm gonna drop it right on top just above the base coat alright and as you can see it popped the logo up right there and I immediately do not like our color choice because the blue is not um, showing up very well at all so we can either we have two options here we can either change the color of the truck itself or which I think I'd like to do is change the color of the iRacing logo. Um, it's important to know how to do stuff like this. So I'm going to do this for you guys now so you can see. So what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, how am I going to do this for you guys? All right, so we're just going to zoom in on this here. All right, view, zoom, 100 will bring us in pretty close here. All right, so. Right now, we have this layer selected. So no matter what we do right now, it's anything, the only thing it's going to affect is the layer we're looking at, or that we have selected, okay? So even though it's on top of the truck, as long as we have that layer clicked, that's gonna be the only thing affected. So what I wanna do is change the color of just the uh, iRacing.com motorsports simulations. I want that to be white. Okay, so what we're gonna do here and like I said, I'm not an expert at this. If I mess up, I apologize. Just try to follow along. We will get we will get it done. I might just have to try more than once to do something properly. So I apologize in advance for that. Uh, all right. So this is the free select tool or the lasso tool. Okay. Now since we're only since we're working with this layer for this image, we don't have to be precise. Okay. So and all we want is this the letters selected. So we can click here. And then click here, click here, click here, click here. All right. So you can see how it actually kind of put those little marching ants all by itself around the image because it knows that that's the layer we have selected. All right. So now what we want to do is you right click on the layer. Actually, you know what? We might not even have to do that. So we're going to try to do this white. So over here, we're going to go back to the color while this is all selected. Uh, and then we're going to click on white, which we did there. Bucket fill again. And now we're going to switch this to fill. Let's see. Actually, the fact that that's transparent. Let me see, try it this way. All right, no. So that didn't work, obviously. So back up. We're going to do fill similar colors. And we're going to click on just the blue parts alright so it's only filling up things that are blue which is exactly what we want it to do okay now there's a I'm sure there's a better way to do this and uh, I actually might show you that way as well because this is kind of like the not right way to do this even though it's working for us uh, the only reason it's working is because this blue is a solid blue there's no Sometimes the pixels on the edge of images, they kind of fade to different shades of a color. And that would, in theory, leave us with sort of a, a crappy looking outline, which we don't want, obviously. So you can either do it this way, which is what I'm doing right now. And there's actually an M there that we're going to have to change to. So let's go up here and select None to unselect everything. Now we're still on this, uh, this layer here. Now we're going to click on this tool. This is the move tool. This is one of the most important ones. Um, now, when you start an, uh, a, a project like this, 
when you click on the move tool for the first time, if you look down at the toolbar, it's going to say uh, pick a layer or guide. So right now, if we tried to move this, it would move the entire image around. Okay, but what we want to do is move the active layer. So click that. Now it'll allow us to move this layer uh, separately from everything else. So I'm moving it so that we can see the I and the M because obviously we need to uh, fix those. Okay, there. So back to move layer. Now it's white like we wanted. Okay, the other way you could do that is we're going to do it this way. So we're going to. Um, Let's see. So I'm actually going to delete this just so I can show you the other way. Delete layer. We're going to drag the image back from this folder again where it's saved. Okay, we're going to drag it down here again as if we just as if we haven't done anything yet. Okay, we changed the color of the truck to black. And actually, you know what? I'm going to show you even a better way to do this. Delete layer. What we're going to do is instead of dragging it into that image, we're going to right click and go to edit with GIMP and then what that does is open it in its own little thing which is perfect so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lasso tool lasso tool it again or free select whatever gonna select just this part I'm gonna right click edit copy right click again paste as and we're gonna do new layer okay so now we're gonna let's see unselect everything so now you can see uh, we're gonna turn off the bottom layer and you can see that we've got irisin.com all by itself now in its own layer here okay so we can turn that off we can turn both of them off both of them on just to kinda show you what we're working with here uh, what I'm gonna do first is get it lined up so we're already on the move tool move the active layer We've got the layer we just pasted, which is just the lettering, not the picture, selected. And we're going to drag it over here where we want it. And uh, we're going to try to get it as close as possible. There might be a better way to line these up. I don't know. But that looks pretty good to me. So we can test it like that. All right. It's perfect. So we're going to turn off the bottom layer now. We're still uh, selected on the top layer, which is what we want. Now, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to right click and then you're gonna go down and click alpha to selection and what that's gonna do is select everything visible in this layer okay so as you can see it is now highlighted every visible portion of this layer which is what we want to do because we want to paint everything white so now we don't have to rely on the paint bucket to fill similar colors okay so if the logo was like two or three different colors and you wanted it to be solid Alpha 2 selection is going to help you, is going to be better than the first way we did this because now all we have to do is make sure our white is selected, which it is. Okay, and now instead of filling similar colors, we're going to click on fill whole selection. And the whole selection, all the only thing that is selected are the letters here, which is perfect. So now we click anywhere in there, boom, now everything is white. Select none. Perfect. That is perfect. So, now what we do is turn the layers back on and there you go our second layer back on and since we have the the uh, top layer perfectly lined up over the bottom layer uh, it uh, you can turn the bottom layer back on and you don't see any of the blue uh, now we might it might show up if we had it against a, a white background or something, but uh, this looks pretty good to me. Let's pretend that I didn't have it perfectly lined up. Um, that's going to be kind of important for the future as well. Uh, so we're going to move this layer a little bit. We're going to move it over one to the right. So see how they're not lined up now, and you can kind of see the blue there. It doesn't ruin the image. It just it's not perfect. So let's say you can't get something lined up like you want and you see some some blue there what you would do is you'd go to that particular layer which is the bottom layer now so we'll turn the top layer off so you can see what I'm talking about we're gonna free we're gonna lasso tool it again just the area that we want to manipulate so now that just this portion is selected literally all you have to do is hit the delete key 
boom. So the delete key erased everything we had selected. So now when we turn this back on, we don't have to worry about what was behind it anymore because it's gone. So we'll do select none. And we've got that logo looking just like we want it. So now, since we're, we want this image on a different project, instead of leaving it in two layers like this, what we can do is merge it down. And you click on the top layer and merge it down. And what that does is it makes everything into one layer now. See? So now it's one image again. Okay. So that's how you would do that. Um, and while, oops, don't do that. And while we're here, let's say we wanted to make a drop shadow for this logo because, well, I like drop shadows because I think they look good. So now, since everything's one layer, whatever filter we apply, whatever effect we apply to this whole image, it's going to affect the whole image, which is what we want. Okay, so a drop shadow happens to be under filter. So we're going to go to filter, light and shadow drop shadow all right and here's the window for that all right offset X and offset Y that's how far the shadow is from being behind one of these letters I, I like four. I don't really feel the need to change it too much I mean we can do like a six to make it a little bit more visible the blur radius is how it's how blurry it is and uh, the distance of blur that it gives away from the lettering that the shadow is coming from. So we're going to leave it at 15 for now because it's fine. Uh, this is what I like to mess with. So we're going to turn the opacity up to 90 so that it's a nice and visible shadow. Uh, you click OK. Boom. So now you can see they gave us a nice shadow, but it's, I don't know if crisp is the right word because it's a shadow, but uh, it just gives the image some depth. So that when we plop it onto the car, it'll look like the image is, is popping out. You know, it just it just makes it look more realistic as far as I'm concerned. So we like that, and it's the nice thing about that filter is that it adds its own layer behind the image as a drop shadow. So you can kind of see the difference by clicking it on and off. You can see which one you like more or less. I like the shadow. We're gonna keep the shadow. So what we're gonna do here is merge down. Actually, we could merge down because this is our final image. But just in case we say, put it on the car and say, wow, this looks horrible. I don't want the shadow anymore. I'm going to leave these layers separate. And then what you would do is come over here to File, and then Save As, and uh, you name it whatever you want. And you would leave it as XCF. That's the project file. So when you save it as an XCF, that means you can go back to that file later, open it in GIMP, and it'll have all your layers here on the right ready for you. So we're going to just leave it named iRacing, that's fine. All right, so now we have that saved. You can see it here in this folder now. It's right there. You can see it's a GIMP file already, so that's simple enough. OK. Now the next thing we want to do to use it as an image, export. So we're going to export it as iRacing.png. Now it's going to replace the logo we already have, but that's OK. We, you could have always renamed it something so we could have kept the blue version that we started with but I don't care enough to do that so we're gonna over overwrite it leave all these settings the way they are I've never had to mess with those click on export boom so now we've got that logo looking exactly how we want it so we're gonna zoom back out to 50 so we can see what we're doing alright so we're gonna drag that logo over here at right above base again all right, so there you go. So there's our white drop shadowed logo looking pretty spiffy, I might add. So the next thing we want to do is, let's say, let's say we wanted this on the hood. Obviously, it's not facing the right direction. Right, here I clicked on move layer. It's still on move the active layer because it's still the same project as before. Moving it around. Okay, I'm looking around. I'm like, ah, okay. See if we can get this to fit the hood. So the first thing we want to do is rotate it. There's a couple different ways you can do that. You can there's like fixed rotations. If you go to layer, anytime you want to do a layer manipulation, you click on layer. Okay, a lot of times people, including myself, I took me forever to figure this out. I would go to image, and then uh, uh, transform. Okay, flip horizontally, vertically, rotate. 
90 degrees clockwise, counterclockwise, etc. Uh, and the problem with that was it was flipping the entire image, and I was and I couldn't figure out what, how to just get this damn thing to flip. Uh, and what you do is you can either go up here to layer, transform. All right, now for just for example, let's flip it 90 degrees counterclockwise. All right, so now it would be running straight across the hood. It's still the wrong size, but we'll get to that. All right, so we're gonna go back here. One, okay. Or instead of going up to the menu up top, you can right click the layer, go to select the layer, and then you can transform it from there. 90 degrees counterclockwise. Say same effect, two different ways to do it. So just keep that in mind. Most of the things I show you, there's gonna be multiple ways to get them done. Um, I'm showing you the way that I've figured out and what I'm used to. It doesn't mean it's the right way or the fastest way or whatever. It's just how I know how to manipulate the program. All right. So let's say now we need, well, not let's say, we definitely need to scale it down. So let's get the the top of it lined up where we want it. And now we're going to click on this next tool. It's called the scale tool. Scale the layer, selection, or path. Okay, so that's what we're going to do there. Then you just come over here, click on what you want to scale, and it actually brings up this window where you can manually type in your scale, uh, your width and your height dimensions. Uh, I have absolutely no clue what the numbers are that we need for our end result, so there's a much easier way to do this. Um, and to keep the image from stretching or bl like bloating out or looking all warped and weird, you want to click this chain, okay? This links, this forces the scale that it's at now to stay at that scale. If we leave it unchecked, you can kind of smush the image like that, you know, you can stretch it, you know, it looks horrible, right? So, cancel that. So instead of doing that, we'll click back on there, we'll link that, and now look, now you can't do that. Now it forces the scale to stay the same which is what we want. So, what we're doing here now is squishing this down to just uh, to fill up the whole hood. And then click on move layer again so we can manipulate it some <coughs> excuse me some more. And there we go. All right. Now, from experience, I know that uh, on track this is going to be kind of small and I don't know the hood is kind of like the, f the focal point of a paint scheme as far as I'm concerned kind of it's like where the it's it all begins and it should be eye-catching and just be a little bit more flashy than what we've got here so uh, one of the things you can do is instead of just having it be straight across plain Jane you can use this tool up here it's called the rotate tool so instead of only being able to rotate at 90 degrees from that other menu you click on the rotate tool and then you, you click on this image here and now you can either you can do it two ways you can either leave your left mouse button depressed which is what I'm doing now and you can rotate it by moving your mouse around okay or you can use this box here and drag this thing around uh, I'm a fan of using the mouse just I don't know it just feels more comfortable than this menu but either way it works the same it doesn't really make a difference so let's say we want to do it like that, have a little JDM tilt to it, even though I'm not a JDM fan. So we'll get it like that, and now see how much of a gap it left over here? So now we'll click on the scale tool again, click this corner. It's still linked now because we linked it earlier. And now we'll just stretch it out a little bit more. All right, so that kind of covers up the hood a little bit better. So we've got that in place now. Um, we want eye racing, and we want the logo to be on the quarter panels too. Okay, so we're gonna can since that's our main sponsor or whatever. Uh, so what we'll do is there's two ways. You can either right click on this layer, and then go up here and click on duplicate layer, and that'll duplicate exactly what we have here. We'll do it to show you. Boom. All right. See now, look, eye racing PNG, and then the duplicate layer is put right on top of that layer. Eye racing PNG copy. So watch, we'll go to move layer. It's all in move active layer already because it's the same project. See how it made two now? So now we can either bring this down here, click on the rotate tool, and get it how we want it. Uh, somewhere around there looks good. 
click on the move tool again like that and that looks pretty good and you can actually see the M is a little bit lower than the I so I would probably be inclined to rotate it just a tad that's actually too much um, you can get more more fine adjustments by using the mouse instead of using that that bar so again we'll do it like that and it looks a little bit better maybe one down that's this is all fine-tuning stuff but anyway so we've got that one there now so now we can either duplicate that layer now or we can drag it in from here from this folder again so we'll do it this way this time so you can see both ways so we're gonna drag that in put it on top of that last layer now we've got the unscaled version actually you know what the the this actually isn't the best way to do this by dragging it back in as a new layer because now we have no reference point to get this logo for the driver side to be the exact same size as the passenger side logo so I'm actually gonna delete this layer by right clicking delete layer okay we wanna duplicate this layer now so right click duplicate layer so now we've got a duplication of that layer um, now here's where this is a, a new thing here so now to get it to show up on, properly on that side since it's words and not just an image we have to flip it vertically and horizontally um, so we'll do this we'll do it this way we'll go up here to layer transform flip horizontally so you can see it like flipped it well it flipped it horizontally <laughs> and then obviously that doesn't look right <laughs> because it's backwards so now what we do is we go back to layer transform and you flip it vertically so now you can see that uh, when this paint scheme is applied to a truck it's going to uh, it's going to read properly so we scooted that into position this is the gas tank inlet uh, so we're gonna leave it right there so that you can see the whole word on track uh, let's see and the road so what I did there is click on the road actually there we go rotate I'm gonna rotate this with just one click over just to make sure that that looks right I don't like the logos to look like they're sagging off the side of the truck when you're on track so to get that rotated in the right position is important it's important to someone like me like I said it's not important to everybody which is okay but that's not what we're gonna do so now we're gonna go over here and we're gonna click on number blocks just to make sure and look at that almost perfectly lined up to not have any interference from the number that iRacing is gonna stamp on so that's actually pretty good we're gonna turn the number blocks back off and continue on um, so let's say we want an associate sponsor actually you know what I'm looking at this hood and I'm thinking mm, I don't like the way that looks it's just not big enough there's a lot of empty space um, so let's go back to Google and let's find let's find another logo that we can use okay this one's kinda cool iRacing series it's it's got a transparent background already so that's perfect so we'll just save this one for later in case we want to use it um, this is kinda what I do when I do a logo search I just save a bunch of them and uh, that way when I'm painting I've got everything kinda ready to go. Uh, trading paints is imp an important thing for us iRacers because it allows us to paint these custom paint schemes and put them on the truck so I like this one it's transparent it's it's a good size 1800 by 500 right click we're gonna save that one here too and uh... what else what else what else and we'll do this one. It's just the picture. Although, honestly, I don't feel like going through the trouble of changing the letters again. Even though it's not that much trouble. Um, uh, we'll save it anyway, just in case we want to use it. Okay. So now I've got some more, some more logos to choose from. Actually, this one's white. That might actually work better for our truck because it's a dark color. So, save image boom okay so now we'll get this out of the way now you can see that we've got 
all these logos now saved. We did this one, this one, this one, and this one. So what we're going to do now is just to see what they look like, we're going to bring over the logos over here. We're going to drag each one into its own layer right over here. Okay, um, we've got this black shading paints one, but honestly, I don't think black is going to work great on this truck, but it might. So, all right, so we've got all these layers here now. What we're going to do is we're going to click the eyeballs to turn each one of them off until we're just working with one at a time. So right now, the one we've left on is this one, the trading paints logo. So we could either, actually, you know what? I'm trying to think of something to put in this corner of the hood. So what we could do is turn that one off. Go back to this one. Even though I know that the trucks aren't the iRacing series, NASCAR, whatever, I don't care. This is just more so to show you guys how to do things than to be correct in terms of what series is run, what vehicles, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to scale this down. You can see it's already linked. So we're going to scale it down to fit that gap. Click on the Move tool. Move it over here. It's still a little big for my liking. I'll scale it down a little more. Okay. So we've got those logos in place. I'm just not sure. Oh man, that eye racing on the hood just doesn't. It's just not really doing it for me, to be completely honest. Hmm. <laughs> dilemmas. Dilemmas. Um, hmm. What should we do here? You know what? Scratch that logo. And where's the hood one? There we go. Scratch that one. What we're going to do is let's turn this. Let's use this logo and just turn the whiting right on the bottom of it. So we're going to do it the right way. So we're going to open this. Edit with GIMP. We're going to open it in its own little thing here. Lasso tool. All right, we're just going to select what we want to change to white, which is that. Right click, copy, right click again, paste as a new layer. The layer is up top here, so we're going to, it's already selected. We're going to click the move tool and move this back down here where we want it and get it as lined up as possible. That looks pretty good. Not perfect, but it doesn't matter because remember I taught you how to delete this part and since we still have the selection in that spot, we select the bottom layer, click delete, and it deleted the bottom half as you can see now, so it's gone there. So we'll turn this on here and then we'll uh, merge, the, actually whoop, before we merge we're going to alpha to selection that layer, the new layer we just made, which is just the lettering. All right, we're going to make sure white white's already selected. Bucket, fill hole selection, boom. Select, none, and there you go. Uh, that's how we need it to look. So now we're going to merge the layers together. So it's one layer again, and we're going to do another drop shadow on this logo now. So go up to filters. Light and shadow, drop shadow. I don't know why it keeps putting that window behind GIMP, but whatever. 6, 6, 15, and 90 opacity. So it's got the same settings we already used earlier. Boom, there we go, perfect. So now we're going to export this as PNG, iRacing Square. We're going to overwrite that. Already exists, do you want to replace it? Yes, replace. Export. All right. So we're gonna delete this one. Wait, this. Yeah, we'll delete this one. And we're gonna drag in our new one that we saved from that other folder. And there it is. Looks much better with that shadow, I think. So now we're gonna rotate this layer by going to transform. Ninety degrees counterclockwise. And now when we scale this. Make sure the chain is, is linked, it is. Scale it down. Now we've got something that's covering up the whole hood. This is actually still too big. 
but that's okay. We can just click on the scale tool and scale it down some more. Uh, that Chevy logo on the hood is really annoying, but it is what it is. Alrighty, that's close enough. So there we go. Now I've got a nice big iRacing logo on the hood. Um, so that's how you do that. Let's see here. Actually, my initial plan was to do a, a full video. But I think I might split this up just because I'm I don't want to like ramble on and bore you guys with different thoughts and stuff while I'm trying to do it. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll just power on. Maybe I won't be a little, a little punk about it. Uh, all right. So let's just power on. So we've got the logos where I want them. Okay. I don't know what this is. Oh yeah. So we can delete this layer for now. So we can always bring them back later. Trading paints, um, trading paints. Something we can we can uh, give them a shout out on like the back of the truck maybe. Where's this layer at? Oh, here we go. Uh, what the heck? Oh, because the eyeball's not selected. There we go. So we'll. Uh, I kind of like the black one more than the white one. The black one shows up well enough because it's got some white outline to it. Um, I'm gonna put this one in the truck bed. So let's make that one invisible again. Layer, since we have this layer selected. Transform 90 degrees clockwise. We'll move it over here. Scale it down. The chain is clicked, so it won't warp and we'll get all funky looking. Okay, close, close. Bring it down a little bit more by clicking the scale tool again. And we'll drag it in place here. So there we go, trading paints. So that's the logo on the back of the truck now. We'll make it a little smaller. There we go. Okay, so trading paints has now has a shout out on the back of our truck, which is fine with me. Okay. Uh, so we've still got the back of the truck to do. And then if we want to do like some kind of design along the side, which uh, isn't a bad idea. I like having stripes and, and things. That makes the truck look a little better. So what we'll do here is, first thing we'll do is, uh, I like to kind of have these cowls, or not cowls, but uh, the side skirts, I like to have those a different color. It's, I don't know, it makes the truck, I just, Makes the paint scheme pop a little bit more, um, so we'll do that. And also, just kind of a general comment here: you do not have to do these uh, logos first. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if you're gonna do like lines and and different things on a paint scheme, doing them, doing the logos after you lay lay down the base coat and the stripes and everything is actually, I guess, technically easier. Um, it doesn't really matter either way because right now we can just turn off all these layers that we've done. They're still there, but we're just going to turn them off so we can see what we're doing. Uh, turn off the eye racing ones. So, as you can see, now we're still left with what we basically started with, even though we've already done some work, but that's okay. So, now what we're going to do is so we've got the base coat, which is dark gray. We're going to go, excuse me, Jesus. We're going to go right click on that and we're going to click on new layer. It brings up this window, create a new layer, layer name, let's call it striping, or we'll just call it stripes. Actually, they're not really stripes, we'll do side skirts, skirts. Boom, okay. So, now as you can see, side skirts is a blank layer right on top of base, and that's where we want it. So, um, if you wanted to move it, you can obviously click left click it and then drag it, but we want it directly above the base. So now this is uh, kind of an important thing that I uh, didn't know at first, uh, but eventually once I got I found the tool and then got used to it, I was like, oh man, it's really not that bad to use. Um, and it's called the path tool, which is this one right here. Create and edit paths. All right, 
so this is what's going to allow us to create some like sloping lines and and have some smooth curvatures in uh, some striping instead of just having uh, instead of trying to do it freehand and you know it looks like you painted the line out of uh, Microsoft Paint <laughs> which is obviously not what we want um, so this is what we're gonna do for actually you know what I'm getting a little ahead of my damn self darn it alright well we'll get back to that that's the next thing we're gonna do first we're gonna go back to this free select tool for this alright so first thing I like to do here is go to view and then zoom back in so that I know that I'm getting these lines right because uh, like the, the this part right here I know are the those two bars that stick out of the rear windshield and go down onto the deck lid we don't want to touch those with any different types of paint that we're gonna do right now because it'll show up on the final scheme so so right now we're gonna start with the free select tool and we're gonna start right there just above that black line and then we're gonna have it slope up just a little bit like that so we'll click there and then and we're gonna try to get the same amount of distance between here and here and here and here so it looks like maybe about right yeah, right there okay and then here's where the wire tool comes in handy sometimes let's click on wire All right, so we want this line to be right at the base of this bumper. Actually, let's turn that wire back off. It's actually distracting me. Um, because look, so this is the side of the truck. We're gonna bring this right up to the base of the headlight, right like that. Because if you go up here, actually, you know what? I don't think that's what we want. Okay, those are the wire. We want this line to come to about right there. Hmm. Okay, so we want, instead of it being there, here we, you can click on it and bring it. I think we want it to be about right there. And then you bring the next one down. Maybe a little bit higher. Down, down. All right. Now the rest of the stuff won't get painted on. Oh no! What happened over here? There we go. I don't know what happened here. Got some extra clicks or something. Shoot! Can we delete these? I don't even know how. If we can, shit. Well, sorry guys. We're gonna have to reselect everything. Not a big deal though. So we're gonna redo this. We're gonna click here. Bring it to about here. We're gonna bring that to the base of the headlight. We're gonna click there at the edge, come down. There we go. Come down to the bottom of this image to the last possible pixel, right? there come over here and back up so now we've got that whole area selected oh man that looks horrible what am I doing sorry guys like I said I'm, this is I'm not <laughs> I'm not an expert by any means so let's try this one more time turn these stupid wires off they're just, I think they're distracting me more than anything Right now, anyway. Uh, we're gonna here to there to there, and then we want this to slope down. So we'll do it right there, and that'll translate to a nice sloped look on track. It'll look real fast, which is what I like about that. All right, click right there here and there. So now when you go back you can kind of see it's got that nice little slant to it. It starts wide here and then it'll go down and get thinner as we go. So that's that's what we're looking for there. Uh, now, let's see, we'll just do it, I guess we'll just do it like a black or like a dark gray maybe. Like that. 
fill, hole selection, and since we had that selected with that tool, it fills that whole <coughs> it fills that whole area with the color that we've got. So now this is in this layer here, side skirts, because that's where we pasted it. So now what we want to do is duplicate this layer for the other side. Which, oh man, excuse me, I don't know why I'm so tired. So what we're going to do here is click on side skirts, duplicate layer, okay, and then what we're going to do is click on layer, transform, and now since this isn't lettering, it just needs to be flipped vertically, not horizontally. So we're going to flip this layer vertically. Um, and we're actually going to have to zoom out for this so we can see what's going on. So it flipped that whole layer vertically and now move the active layer. So now we're going to move the layer down and you see how we've got that stripe there still? So now what we have to do is line this bad boy up. So we're going to come down here and see exactly how it is. So you can see that the, the line goes right just over top of that black dot. So we're going to try to get that lined up the same here. Just over top of that dot. Maybe one more up. There we go. Okay. So now we've got that lined up. Now if you go into view and zoom in you can actually see that um, it overlapped the front bumper a little bit right there and it's on the ass end of the truck there that that part doesn't matter because we're gonna paint this the same color anyway but for right now uh, this is how we do this so we're gonna keep this layer selected that we just manipulated then we're gonna use this lasso tool again free select and we're going to we're actually gonna have to zoom in a lot to make sure we get exactly what we want to get here so we're going to click right right there in the corner and we're going to bring it over here to right there come up come around make sure we get everything that's the color we don't want and then we're going to hit delete and it deletes just that part what do select none so you can see deletes all that color off of the front where we don't want it okay so and since we're gonna paint this the same color later we can leave this overlap that's not gonna be a big deal so let's zoom back out to 50 oh that actually slopes down some <laughs> I don't know Let's see. Actually, let me let me undo those changes. I think I might have just because if you see down here, you scroll down, please. There we go. So this actually slopes downward until those two dots, the one. So we're gonna try to get this more perfect now, so we don't have to f mess with it later. View. A hundred. Two and the one. So we're gonna come here actually, and then come down back down this way. There we go. And now we're going to delete that part. I guess. I don't know. Whatever. If we need to repaint that later, it's not a big deal. It's easy enough to throw some paint on there. Alright. Out to 50 again. Alright, so now I've got our side skirts done. Um, and actually, okay, so I also like to have... Well, no. Um, I'm actually a fan of this orange paint for this rear spoiler. We can do this next real quick. Um, it reminds me of the chase days back in the day, or not the chase, but uh, the race for the million, like the Winston million or whatever. 
so I'm a fan of this stuff. So um, I like to have the front splitter, which is this piece here, match whatever color I have the spoiler. Um, so what you do here is, this is under the painted area again, of course. So uh, we can either select this and color it here, but if we do that now, it's going to color the base. It's going to color that splitter in this base layer. So what we want to do again is new layer. It opens this window. We're going to do a splitter. All right. So now we have splitter selected. So now whatever we do next, let's zoom in a bit so we can see. Whatever we do next is going to be on the active layer of splitter. So we're going to select this, this. So right now we're just trying to get this splitter selected. All right, nothing else but the splitter. So let's get this moved over. <coughs> Excuse me. Come down here. All right. So now just the splitter is selected. We've got our new splitter layer here. Uh, and what we want to do is shoot. Well, I already screwed that up. Now, since we only have that selected, what we would do to get this color is uh, actually, you know what? It's not a big deal. Let's just change this to a red, whatever. It'll be close enough. So we're going to take the bucket, fill whole selection, make sure we're in splitter still. We are. Boom. So now just the splitter is that color. Now, that is not a perfect match to this. Uh, so what we do here is we select none. Uh, we go to s the rear spoiler layer so that it's active. We click this eyedrop tool and watch when we click on it. It's actually going to select. You didn't see the change here. I'll do this. Watch when I click on the splitter how this black box changes to that color because we're eyedropping the color out. So now this color is a perfect match to this. So now that we've got that, we'll come back down to this layer that we've made, splitter, right click alpha 2 selection it selects just the layer area which is what we laid out earlier click on the bucket fill whole selection so even though you didn't really see a change there it's now a perfect match to the spoiler color select none so that's how you do that and now in the future the fact that we did it in the splitter in a different layer than the base if if you put this on track and you hate the orange splitter you can just come back to this paint uncheck the eyeball and it'll be gray or you can keep it checked do alpha to selection again and then if you want it let's say for some whatever reason you want it to be neon green you can go select neon green boom fill active layer fill the whole selection of that layer okay so that's how the layers work so let's go back to uh, orange there we go select none and there you go so now I've got our splitter done What do we want to do now? Let's see. Let's add some. Let's add some stripes. I have no clue what color to make these, but let's just add them anyway. Um, all right. So this is where the 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 path tool comes into play. Select path. The uh, path tool. Excuse me. And let's say we want to bring some lines. What do we want to do here? Let's do a white stripe, like a thin one along the side. That usually looks pretty good. So we'll click here. Oh, hang on. Before we do anything, new layer. Now we'll do stripes. So now we've created the stripe layer. So whatever we do next is going to be in this layer. So stripe there, and then you click here. Boom. Now you see how it has that nice line for us? Now, this is the path tool. Now where this comes in handy as opposed, uh, as opposed to this free select tool, we're not trying to select anything. We want to paint a path on this line. So what we're going to do is 
and I want the path to be white so we're gonna swap colors there so the white is the selected color now you go to edit scroll down to stroke path make sure we're on the stripes layer which we are stroke path now this window comes up we want to stroke it a solid white so it's already a solid color if you click on uh, pattern it uses whatever pattern you have selected so we don't want that so solid color uh, I want my line width to actually be thin for this one so we're gonna try four first uh, line style there's no dashes we want it to be solid so as you can see this black part here is all solid if you click on a black part you see how you can manipulate this pattern here by clicking these little areas we want all of them to be black to keep it a solid color so uh, stroke with a paint tool that doesn't matter stroke line solid color so we're gonna click on stroke now boom and now look it stroked our path so we're gonna click on the move tool to get those path selections off of there and now I've got that nice little pin stripe. Um, now I actually think one or two thicker won't be bad. So let's undo the stroke path, click path tool again, and let's do another one. See if we can get it the right size this time. Right there to right there. Kind of more of a slope. That might look a little bit better. All right, then we go to edit stroke path again let's bump this up to six pixels everything else is the same stroke path okay yeah I like that line I like that line a lot actually and now same thing as before uh, to duplicate it what we'll do is right click on that layer duplicate the layer and then now that that layer is selected stripes copy click on layer transform and flip vertically again we don't have to flip horizontally because it's not uh, it's not lettering click move tool move active layer and we'll try to get these lined up as close as possible and you gotta kinda do this you just gotta do it by look I guess where is it no nope, too high is that it that looks pretty good right might actually be one too high. I don't know. Hard to say. We can just leave it like that. Whatever. It's close enough. We can adjust it later. <coughs> <coughs> so now I've got that nice stripe along the sides. Um, damn. Got some in my throat. So now what we want to do is try to get this stripe along the back the tailgate as best we can so we're gonna create a third layer so that we can adjust it later if it's off and we will call this rear stripe okay so now we've got that layer here so now the next thing we do will be uh, its own layer so we're gonna click wire to see if that gives us any clues not really just gonna have to eyeball this one, I think. Rear stripes. So we're gonna do another stroke path tool again. Let's see, I'd say that's about like a f quarter of the way up the tail light, maybe the line, that white line. So I'm gonna guess here and say that it's about there. Maybe it's somewhere in between. So the nice thing about this is when you click something down, you can drag it and manipulate the path. Uh, that's I don't know close enough I guess who knows let's do a uh, edit stroke path all the colors and everything are still the same we haven't chosen anything different so there we go so now hopefully when we go to check this uh, it'll be the lines will be lined up if they're not perfect it's not a huge deal we can we can always fix it and the nice thing about that now is that since that rear stripe is its own layer, we can click move layer and we can move that line up and down independent of the rest of these lines. Which is, uh, again, why I stress the importance of making everything you do its own layer so you can go and adjust it uh, in the future without much, without much uh, pain, <laughs> I guess. Um, and then the last thing, actually, you know what? This might not line up perfectly, but I don't really care. Uh, 
I like to put a stripe along here for the Silverado. So again, we're going to do a new layer. We'll call this front stripe. Very creative, I know. All right, path tool again. So now we're going to paint. And how do we do this the best way? Let's see, we'll do one here and one here. I kind of want it to go right through the Silverado. Let's try to get that lined up. There we go. So we're going to stroke that path. Edit. Stroke path. Everything's the same. Stroke. Boom. Uh, now, uh, you can see how it doesn't really look right because the Silverado is white. So the white line kind of it just looks kind of strange. So we're going to zoom in to 100%. And scroll up to what we're going to work on now. What we're going to do is we still got front stripe selected. See, it's its own stripe. Since we've got that layer selected, we're going to take the free select tool. Oops, turning the layer back on. Free select tool. And what we want to do is erase the line that's uh, underneath or on top of Silverado here. So, what we're going to try to do is get this lined up. There we go. All right, so it's just that area selected. And since we've got the front stripe layer selected, now when we click delete, it deletes that white line. Select none. Now you can see Silverado. Now we've got a little bit. <clears throat> I, I went a little too far here, and or not far enough here. So you can see it's a little uneven. Um, you can keep that layer selected. You can zoom in even further. To make these precise changes, so you could click here, here. Let's see, how do we get that? Just barely selected. There we go. So just overlap that line by a little bit. Hit delete. <clears throat> now it deleted it more. Edit. I'm sorry. Click on the move tool. Nope. Select none. That's what I want. View. Back out 200. So not perfect, but it's closer. So you get the idea. So that's how you could adjust that. Uh, let's zoom out to 50. OK, so we've got the striping laid down now. Um, 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 um. What else can we do? Uh, I can show you how to do like a dash pattern with this, too. That might look kind of cool. Uh, Let's see, let's turn the logos back on here. I'm kind of losing sight of what our colors are that we're working with. So blue, red, and white. We're going to leave that trading paints one off of here completely. Actually, we might use it later. Whatever. Turn these back on. That one's definitely gone. So we'll delete that. So this is what we've got so far. Um, let's use GIMP as a co sponsor since. Well, since we're painting with GIMP right now, it makes sense. So let's go back over here real quick to Google. Let's see, GIMP logo PNG images. Okay, so we've got a jillion choices and they're all the same, which is good. So we'll click on one. It's got a transparent background. It actually even looks like it's got a shadow already included, which is perfect. Save image as. Uh, 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 uh okay there we go so now I've got that in here so I'm gonna drag that over to our truck and what we can do is shrink that down it's already I clicked the scale tool it's already linked so we'll shrink that down to I don't know that size looks good Oops, I clicked on scale. I meant to move it. So now we're going to move it down here. Scale it down some more, obviously. Move this out of the way so I can see. Scale it down some more. Now it looks a little strange because this is, uh, it's parallel to the ground and the truck kind of slopes upwards. So what we're going to do is rotate this image just a little bit. Click on the rotate tool and then just give it a little a little tilt kind of makes it look better I think 
Okay, so we've got that how we want it. We're going to duplicate that layer. Uh, now we're going to flip it, the layer, horizontally and vertically. And we're going to move it over here. Do the same thing on this side. Now it's got the opposite tilt because it was on the other side of the truck, so now we have to kind of rotate it back in that direction. I mean, it's close enough. It's hard to really tell. You're never going to notice that on track anyway, so we'll put that right there. And maybe select this layer and move this one down a little bit. But again, this is all personal preference. All right, so we've got our associate sponsors, and then actually, you know what? It might be cool. Let's do a third one. I'm gonna I'm gonna drag it back over from this uh, folder again to make this third one. Drag it in. Scale it down because this one doesn't need to be the same size as a, as a as those other ones. Jesus. Move it, and we're gonna put this on our tailgate. Might be kind of cool looking. Okay. There we go. And now, since this, the striping layers are down here, these logo layers are on top, which is why this logo is on top of that stripe, which is how I want it. Now, if you wanted it for whatever reason to go underneath the stripe, you would just grab the active layer, which is this one here, and you would slide it. You would find that stripe, which is rear stripe, and you'd put that layer below rear stripe. Now, you see how the stripe is on top of it now? Obviously, that's not what we want, so I'm going to move it back up. But that's how you would that's why you manipulate layers and put them where they are so that they overlap properly so just keep that in mind um, okay let's see what else do we want what else do we want I can show you guys how to do some dashes I guess some uh, here we'll put actually I'm gonna drag this irising logo in from the, my folder again and we're going to rotate that layer 90 degrees clockwise and we're going to shrink it down and we're going to put this on the, the bed of the truck too because why not there we go just fill it up a little bit you can put whatever you want I usually put my YouTube channel logo there or uh, some maybe a pinup girl or something like that just all depends whatever you want to do there is fine um, Red and blue. I'm trying to think of something we could do here to kind of bring up the scheme a little bit more. Uh, let's see. Front stripe. Oh, that's the front stripe. Duh. Stripes. Stripes. Okay. So the next layer I want to be below that white stripe, I think. So I'm going to new layer. And we're going to call this the swoosh. Stripes, copy, stripes. All right, so we actually want this below. Okay. So we're going to do the uh, path. Where the hell is it? Path tool, there we go. And we're going to start here. And we're going to end up here somewhere. Put it right there. Now, point A to point B. Uh, looks like that actually I'm an idiot we're gonna put that over here okay point A to point B looks like that right so what we're gonna do is click in the middle of this line hold it and drag it now it brings out these little tabs see how it's starting to bend at the ends it brings out these little tabs and this is how you can manipulate this line to do what you want it to do you see how I'm dragging this around and it makes that line do all kinds of stuff okay can make it do whatever you want uh, so you just got to play with that and find the effect you're looking for I'm not exactly sure what the effect is that I'm looking for which is making this a little bit difficult but uh, that's okay um, I can tell you with certainty that's not the effect I'm looking for let's do I 
don't even know. I mean, whatever. So I'm gonna do it like this. So now when we hit stroke path, it's gonna stroke that one. Let's do this scheme in with this stripe in red. Red might be too much. Blue. Shit, honestly, I don't know, man. This is I'm not having the best luck coming up with ideas here. I'm just trying to show you guys how these things work. Whatever, let's do uh yellow, black, red, blue. Whatever, let's just do black. Uh, we're gonna outline it in white, and then we're gonna fill it with black. So we'll keep white for now. Select stroke path boom so it throws us down that nice white line that we want okay so now we've got that there uh, now what we want see how it came over this came on top of the uh, bars a little bit so what we do now is we uh, keep that layer selected zoom in to 100 so click on the eraser tool I like to click this one because it's solid uh, and then you come over here, maybe make it a little bit smaller, 15. And then you can erase just that portion. So now it's it won't show up on that uh whatever this is called again. All right. So now we want to do uh, let's see. We'll keep. We'll keep swoosh selected. We're going to manipulate the same layer again. So we're going to click path again. We'll keep it as close to this line as possible over here. And then maybe we'll do this one like right there. Click this up so it starts to bend. And then grab this thing and start manipulating it however you want. Oh shit. I don't want to do that. Hang on. Let me get this tool out of here more so we can grab it. There we go. So now, uh, it will look like, not exactly sure how I want it, like I said, I'm just messing with these lines here to see, right there looks good, whatever. Um, okay, so let's do it that way. So we'll stroke that path as well, edit, stroke path, white line, solid, whatever, boom, okay. Now what I want to do is fill in this in between with something. Uh, so this is where this is how I do it. I don't and don't know if this is the right way or whatever, but it works for me and it's pretty simple. So whatever. So we're gonna create another layer underneath swoosh. So we're gonna do swoosh fill is what we're gonna call it. This window's over here. Swoosh fill. Okay. Now it's underneath swoosh. So what this allows us to do is take this free selection tool the lasso tool and as long as you you want to follow in between this line here as long as you follow in between when we go to fill the selection we're about to make the white lines will still be outlining it um, hopefully that makes sense I'll show you what I mean in a second okay so we want Let's see, I don't think we want to go up the pillar at all. So we're going to cut down here. Alright, get to the middle of that line. Now we start coming back down. Make sure you follow the middle of this line. estimate there it's not going to matter because those contingencies will always be there on track so that part is not to be perfect there so we've got got the area selected that we want to fill now the question is what color do we fill this um, let's do a dark, let's do an almost black let's try to match it with the color that's on the side skirt uh, we can match it perfectly in a minute for now let's just do that fill Fill whole selection, boom. Now, do you see how that? Select none. Do you see how? Well, let's back out. 
see how that black um, is underneath those white lines where we outlined and that's because of where this layer is. Now watch if I move the, the fill up above the swoosh see how it kinda it thins out those lines that's why you want to keep it below and keep those white lines the outline okay and now I'm actually noticing like a white little thing right here so I selected the swoosh layer verified by clicking it and I'm actually noticing that this has some overlap here too see so what we're gonna do is click eraser tool again erase that and erase all that there we go perfect all right so now we're working with a little swoosh thing you know I don't know if that'll look good on track or not uh, like I said I'm just trying to show you uh, ways to do things this is how I do things doesn't mean it's right doesn't mean you have to do it that way I'm just throwing it out there for people's enjoyment slash amusement um, oh yeah so now we're gonna do okay so we're gonna merge these two layers down or merge this layer into this layer okay so now it's all one layer now what we'll do is duplicate that then go click on layer flip it vertically there it is now now you can see uh, since the template is at the bottom of the truck over here uh, you know I wasn't too careful in this area but when we put it up here it might overlap on some things but again we can just go erase that afterwards so uh, swoosh fill copy got that layer selected so now we're gonna try to move it into place where it belongs over here right about right about there and actually it didn't overlap on anything so we did a pretty good job there okay so now the stripe is on both sides of the truck um, so uh, I'm, I don't know I'm liking that so far hopefully you guys like it too um, okay what else can we do what else can we do Oh, we need to paint. Okay, so you see how this black part comes up like this? We need to get that effect on the back of the truck still. So let's turn these wires on. So we're going to... Alright, so let's make sure we have the right color selected first. So we're going to take the side skirt. Turn these wires off. So we want the side skirt color. So we're gonna grab the eyedropper, click the set. Let's make sure it's happening. Click the side skirt. Okay, got the proper color selected. So we're gonna do new layer, rear bumper. That way we can adjust this later if we need to. Again. So now we've got rear bumper selected. We're going to turn on the uh, wiring here so I can select the proper areas right there we want to follow the line of that bumper right there so we're gonna do like this like this come around like that so now I've got that rear bumper part selected we are on turn the wires off we're on rear bumper fill whole selection boom so now I've got that part done select on and like I said if we go back into uh, if we go back into iRacing and see that the lines don't line up perfectly then we can just come back in here now that it's a different layer click on rear bumper and just drag this up or down based on where it needs to be for those lines to line up properly okay so we've got that done let's do uh, let's do uh, put the iRacing logo in the back as well finish up the back real quick put the iRacing logo there we're gonna scale it down so it fits where we want it to go move put it right there I mean again this is not perfect this is not by any means the best looking paint scheme I've ever worked on uh, iRacing logos leave a bit to be desired as far as I'm concerned but anyways it just shows you I, I want to fill up that space I don't want to leave it blank you know 
Um, where's the GIMP face at? There we go. So we're going to try to move this a little bit more. Whoops. Move the wrong layer. So I'm going to go to undo move layer. Click the right layer this time. And just move this a bit more centered. There we go. Got our stripes, got all that crap. Um, okay, so now we'll work with some text. Um, let's say, okay, so this here, remember earlier we talked about this at the beginning, this is the windshield banner, this part right here. So we're gonna select the windshield banner, keep that dark color for it, color, select that layer. Now what we're gonna do is, we want white, so we're gonna get white here. We're gonna click on this, text tool here is what it's called and then I like to go and find kind of like a a normal looking uh, font for the for that area I don't know what this looks like it, you can experiment with the different fonts and then so my name is Nathan Miller obviously so I'll type out Nathan Miller and then you highlight all that and then you can change the size of it all right, there we go, and I want it to be. How come it won't italicize? That's weird. Oh, because it's already italicized. The font is already has that built into it. So, all right, whatever. So we're gonna call that a good size windshield banner. So see how this layer is right above the windshield banner? That's important because look, if you move it below, the text gets covered up. So you have to make sure that that text layer is just above the windshield banner. So we'll move that. Okay, boom. So now on track, it'll have your name on the windshield banner, which is kind of neat. Uh, you can put anything. You can put an image there. You can put you could put uh, you know your league name, whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, so that's how that works. Uh, let's see what else. What else? What else? Mm. Okay, so the last thing I guess for realism's sake, you would want to have uh, logos on these on these uh, B pillars. So what I like to do for that is turn the wiring on, get to a hundred percent zoom. Okay, now this big, these flat, this flat gridded area is where you want them to go because this part of the pillar obviously is going to be bent backwards. And this one's going to be bent forward or bent inward, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So you want the logos to fit there. So what I do is, this is where uh, I've got my own logo folder with all these logos already saved. Um, I've got tons of logos here. So what I do is I just drag a bunch of them in place. Let's go back down here. Uh, we put the logos up towards the top. So we'll use, let's see, I've got like my go-to ones. So I've got, um, well, I've got my, my league logo that I forgot to use yet. So <laughs> I should probably do that. Um, mock speed racing. Oh, so we'll use that logo first. We'll put this one over here. All right, so there's that logo. We'll drag this down. Uh, we'll scale it down a lot. You gotta scale it down like more than you think so that it fits. Okay, these aren't like necessarily for reading on track. These are just to kind of fill in this pillar so that it looks right. Okay, so we'll scale that down to about there. Um, all right, I'm looking through my folder again. Let's see, I've got uh, Mac Tools. So I like to use that one. We'll move it down first. Scale it down to size. Scale. And then we'll move it over here. Put it on top of that logo. Uh, I got the mobile one one that I cut out of a logo at some point. So I like to use that one. We'll scroll down. Or scale it down, excuse me. Select it, move it, 
Actually, I don't like where that MSR logo is. I'm going to scoot it back a bit. There we go. Uh, what else? What else do I have? We can do uh, like Asus or NVIDIA or something like that. If I can find them. Like I said, I've got a billion logos. It's hard to find them sometimes in this folder. I need to organize them probably. Whatever. Um, here we go. NVIDIA. I kind of like the NVIDIA one. That one's enormous, so you actually have to scale this one a couple times. Scale this down. Scroll back down to it. Scale it down some more. We'll move it. Uh, move it over here now. Now that it's manageable, scale it down and again. Move it. Okay, and we got room for like one more. I don't know. Sometimes I like to put the American flag, something like that. So let's find. I have an American flag image saved here. So if I can find it, we'll select it. Of course, now that I'm trying to show you guys, I can't find it. I guess I'll move it over here while I look for it. So you guys aren't wondering what the hell I'm doing. There it is. Okay, so let me drag this over here. American flag. Boom. We'll move it down first if I can find it. There it is. Alright, scale. Scale it down. Put that bad boy right there. And there we go. So now we've got our contingencies pillar here. And uh, I know that these are the right size and line up well because uh, I've already done all the verifying on track and stuff. So this is all just kind of by eye at this point. By feel, I guess, whatever. Uh, so now what I like to do is instead of moving each one of those individually to the other side, I like to merge down so that it's all one thing. Merge down, merge down. Mac Tools Mobile One, merge down. So now we've got this whole thing as one, one layer. See how we can turn it on and off with this layer. So now we'll duplicate that layer. Layer, transform, flip horizontally. Layer, transform, flip vertically. So now I've got the same layer ready to go on the other side. So we grab it and we move it over here just like that. Now if you notice it's a little bit off center there so what I do is I click rotate and I just grab it and I grab it and uh, just rotate it a bit just to kind of get it lined up. Again it's uh, not something you'd ever really notice on track. I just like to make it make it look good. So alright. Um, let's see the last thing would be uh, if you want to put your name up here, um, and it works similar to what we did here with the windshield banner. If you want to put your name over top of the door, what you would do is click on the text tool. All right, this one I kind of like to use a more fancy looking font. So we'll do, uh, uh, let's see, what do we want to use? I mean, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Jesus, I'm just doing this to show you. So I'll click on Berkeley Thin. Who cares, right? Uh, click over here. Nathan Miller. Uh, now I actually like that size already. I'm gonna maybe bump it up like one or two, maybe just one. All right. Now, if you zoom in more here, view, zoom in to 200, you can kind of see that it doesn't follow the contour of the the roof. So I'm gonna grab it. Fuck. What is this? Okay. Uh, grab it and uh, rotate it just a little bit, just so it follows the contour of the roof there. And the wire kind of helps you verify that. So there you go. So that's how you put the name up there. Right around there. This is the part right here where these lines start to get thin that you don't want to overlap because it starts to curl over onto the A pillar. So anywhere in here is good. I like to line it up there because normally what I'll do is I'll put the American flag here and uh, on the other side and I guess you know what I will do that so I can show you guys so first I'll duplicate that layer and I'm gonna rotate it or flip it horizontally and vertically because it's words so you have to then we'll move it up here we'll get the end to about the same spot just in front of these thinner lines here 
we have to rotate it now because it has the opposite slope for the other side of the truck. I actually went too far. Go over like two more. Or go back to That's pretty good. I like that. Uh, and then again, I'm going to come over to my folder that you can't see where my logos are. And I'm going to drag the American flag in here one more time. Scale it down. Okay. Move it. Move it down here in front of my name. Rotate it a little bit like that. Maybe one more click. Again, it's all personal preference. Put it right there. All right, and so we'll duplicate the American flag layer. Again, flip it vertically and horizontally. Move that over here. Put it right behind your name on this side. and get it to follow the contour of the roof and there you go view zoom 50 percent we'll do 50 turn off the wiring don't forget to turn off the wiring I forget to do that a lot and then you're out on track and your truck looks like uh, you're in the matrix so don't forget to do that so that is the very basics of coming up with your own paint scheme um, it's nothing fancy it's definitely honestly it's not really that good to look at as far as I'm concerned but it is a paint scheme from start to finish um, and you know hopefully it helps you guys have the confidence to at least start messing with GIMP and then you can fiddle with more of the tools and more of the uh, the different things uh, that you can do later um, if you guys have any questions please feel free to comment uh, I, I do respond to comments um, I would gladly make another tutorial if you guys have specific questions on how to do certain things. Um, uh, yeah. Now, normally what I, what we would do here is uh, I would have iRacing open already, and we would what we would do is save this file. And so let's do this now. So we're gonna export this file. Actually, first we're gonna we're gonna save as, and then we're gonna save this to the folder or just save it under other people's paint schemes okay save the didn't we save this already oh no we saved that other file okay save this file to wherever you want it okay now that's the project file so that's the file with all the layers that we just saved if you want to up or uh, export this and upload it to trading paints what you have to do is when you're all done, you come over here to File and you click Export As, and you change this part, the PNG. You change the extension to TGA, okay? The Targa file. That's what I, Trading Paints needs to see in order to uh, use a paint scheme. So we'll rename it to uh, iRacing Silverado 2015. Dot .tga. This dot .tga is the important part. Okay, so we're going to ex export that. There it is. Um, now, you can do two things. You either go to Trading Paints. I'll do that here real quick. Trading Paints. And uh, you would go to... So right here, it's your paints. you got to go there. You would go to the Chevy Silverado 2015 update. Okay, upload new paint. And then you would either go to the file, choose file. Let's see, where is it? Uh, iRacing paint schemes, other people's schemes. So you would click on this one. So this is the TGA file. So you would either upload this file from here, open, and then with trading paints running, that's what would eventually upload your paint scheme. And that's what you want to do when everything's said and done, when you know it's perfect. But in order to like, uh, uh, look at what you're making as you go and make changes before you upload like the final version what you would do is you would have an iRacing session open uh, like what I do is I go to a uh, test car on track so I would go you know it doesn't matter what track or whatever but just make sure you have the vehicle selected that you're painting test car on track open up the session um, and then have your car out on track or your truck out on track and then, uh, what you would do is uh, you would what you want to do is have iRacing open 
either in Windows mode, windowed mode, um, or you can just alt tab out of it out of full screen mode. Um, sometimes it acts goofy for me when I alt tab out of full screen mode, and I have mine in full screen mode, which is why I can't show you how to check your work as you go. I'm just going to tell you the process. Um, right now I'm recording with my capture card. If I alt tab, uh, if I alt tabbed into an iRacing session right now, it would uh, cut my HDMI signal for a s split second and uh, it actually cuts the video that I'm recording and it would just it would mess up the whole recording so unfortunately I can't do that I can make a separate tutorial later to show you how but I'll just try to talk you through it real quick so you've exported the paint uh, now what you would do is you go to where you exported it okay other people's paint so here it is the TGA file right the, the other thing you have to do is and I've made a shortcut for this iRacing shortcut you would go to your iRacing paint folder okay so this is right here obviously I don't know exactly how to tell you where to find this on your computer it's wherever your paint schemes are for iRacing wherever iRacing's default paint folder is I found it once and I made a shortcut to my desktop so I never had to find it again so you open the paint you find the vehicle you're working on which for us is Silverado 2015 you open that up and where'd my other folder go here so what you would do is with oh, and the key to this is you actually have to have trading paints off okay so mine's on because I'm not gonna be able to show you but you're tr you have to turn trading paints off for this to work otherwise trading paints is gonna override your paint folder uh, when you go back into the session so what you would do is you would take turn off trading paints take the TGA that you just exported copy it and then you would paste it into your truck paint folder um, and now here's the the key for this you have to rename it to car underscore and then your account ID number which for me is 139854 so car underscore 139854 the number being your account number and you can actually look at trading paints to find that quickly mine is down here at the bottom customer ID 139854 so car underscore and then your customer ID number okay but again, you would have trading paints off here, so you would have to get that number before you you, <coughs> you did the renaming of this file. So you would turn <coughs> excuse me, you would turn trading paints off, rename that file you just painted to this. You could leave this here, minimize it, whatever. Now at this point you would go into your iRacing server, so you would either alt tab back into the iRacing session, or if you had it in windowed mode you would just click into that window and go back to the session looking at your truck on track on, a, on on the replay or you know you would get out of your truck and use the cameras and you need to be looking at your truck then what you hit uh, to refresh the paint scheme in the session is control R and when you click control R uh, it's gonna refresh the paint scheme with whatever paint scheme you have in this folder right here which is the one that we just did and so what you would be able to do then is uh, when you're in the session you would hit uh, control F12 and it brings up the camera manipulation menu so you can kind of zoom in zoom out rotate around the truck you can get a look at all the little lines and everything and make sure that everything's lining up how you want it to line up um, you know for this paint scheme I would look for this rear line here lining up with this properly uh, I'd look for this part here with the side skirt where I had a little issues a little issue knowing whether I was cutting the proper part out or not um, things like that um, I hope that helped you guys a lot if you have any questions please uh, feel free to ask and uh, yeah I'll talk to you guys then take care